All right, guys. Now, you might hate me for making this video, and I hope you brought some ice cubes because this is going to be a hot take. But with the release of Travis Scott's second mixtape, Days Before Rodeo, finally coming to streaming platforms, it's time we finally have this discussion. Days Before Rodeo is Travis Scott's best project, hands down. Now, I know what you're going to say, oh, Rapaholics, but you know, Rodeo exists and Astro World exists. Nah. If you existed in 2014, 2015, you know that Days Before Rodeo is where all of this started and in a lot of ways could be argued as Travis Scott's best project. So let's jump into all the reasons why. There's a lot of little nuggets in both of their disses that if it wasn't for these breakdowns and salutes to you know, guys like this, Rapaholics, because I think they directly get it. So first of all, this is where Travis Scott truly elevated his sound to a higher level. This is when he became the Travis Scott that we know today. Days Before Rodeo introduced us to this whole new soundscape of not only just psychedelic trap production, but also these vocal techniques where Travis used autotune to paint this beautiful, drugged out, hypnotic symphony where he's experimenting with crooning, stretching out his vocals, and using them almost like an instrument, creating these energetic, alien type voices. And this whole aesthetic and every new sound Travis Scott introduced on Days Before Rodeo opened the door for everything he did afterwards. But that doesn't necessarily matter, right? Because a lot of times you could say one artist kicked down the door for the other, but the other became much greater, did bigger things, and surpassed their predecessor, right? Like, days before Rodeo walked, so Rodeo could run. And a lot of people say that Rodeo is his best album, which in my opinion is the only album we can make an argument as being better than Days Before Rodeo, but we have to remember, Days Before Rodeo is so overlooked because we never had it on streaming platforms. A much larger audience was able to sit and live with Rodeo, and for that reason, it went on to be remembered as this trap classic that influenced the next generation of hip-hop. But it not only couldn't exist without the styles that Travis Scott created on Days Before Rodeo, but it also, in my opinion, doesn't execute these styles as well as Days Before Rodeo does. For example, the hypnotic, drugged out, auto-tune drenched, spacey hooks that we get on Nightcrawler or Oh My This Side couldn't exist without the melodies Travis Scott created on Quintana Part 2. You could make the debate that his ability to structure a complete song had improved by the time we got to Rodeo, and maybe Nightcrawler is a better overall record than Quintana 2, but that was the beauty of Days Before Rodeo. It wasn't supposed to sound polished or perfect or larger than life. It was supposed to be this raw, unhinged, dark experimental blends of drugs, chaos, auto-tune, and outer space melodies. And in the process, it inspired an entire soundscape of hip-hop. And forget the energetic records. You want to praise Travis Scott's more laid-back, emotional records on Rodeo like 90210 or Pray for Love? Well, Days Before Rodeo executes on that style way better with Drugs You Should Try It. But again, it gets overlooked because it wasn't on streaming platforms. The size of the audience that was able to live with that song was limited. I guarantee you now that it exists on Spotify and Apple Music, Drugs You Should Try It will become a massive hit. Like, I've shown this project to my 20-year-old cousin who was in like 7th grade when Birds in the Tribe came out. And Birds was his introduction to Travis. And he looks at Travis as a goat just because of what Travis has done for his generation of hip-hop. But he grew up in the streaming era. He had never heard Days Before Rodeo. And just seeing his reaction to some of these records shows you how influential and strong this project is. I'm jealous of all these kids who are going to hear this album for the first time in 2024. And there's just so many things about this album that make it Travis Scott's best project. We can talk about the features. Like, the features didn't sound like just regular feature performances where the artist spits a 16 and then leaps. Travis used these guests on the project the same way Kanye West has done in the past. They're there to elevate the experience of the record. They fit the vibe of whatever record they're on. They complement Travis in the production perfectly. And we're getting some of the best features of Thug's career, Quavo's career, or even Rich Homie Quan or Big Sean's career. Then we could talk about Travis Scott's own performances. Besides what I was saying earlier about how he introduced this innovative, new, drugged out style of harmony with auto-tune on songs like Kuntana 2 or Jugs You Should Try It, and in my opinion, he never topped the melodic deliveries he gave us on those two records. But aside from that, Travis Scott also gave us some of his best rapping performances of his career on songs like Don't Play, The Prayer, Backyard, and he gave us some of his best hooks on songs like Mama Sita or Skyfall. Some of the best production we've heard from a Travis album came from Days Before Rodeo, whether it's the bouncy synth-heavy production on Quintana 2, which, if you guys didn't know, was actually originally supposed to be a Kanye West track. We could also talk about the guitar loops on Drugs You Should Try It, or the dark trap Metro Boomin production on Skyfall, which features this slow, almost dragging rhythm that just enhances the feeling of being pulled into like a drugged-out, introspective journey. 
Also, if you're around to witness the making of Skyfall, then you know how legendary of a record this is. There's a video of Travis and Metro Boomin in the studio recording this song live. And as they make tweaks to it and go back and listen to it, as they hear the beat build up with Travis delivering that menacing hook, just seeing their reaction as they dance in the studio as the beat builds up shows you how much passion and emotion went into creating a record like this. And I think that passion that Travis had earlier on in his career hasn't necessarily disappeared. Like he is still very fixated on creating these incredible psychedelic hypnotic album experiences. However, I don't think the hunger or that same raw energy that he had when he was creating Days Before Rodeo exists on an album like Utopia or even Astro World, where he might be a little more focused on creating hits and a very polished project versus creating a one of a kind never heard before experience. And he emphasized this back in 2014 when he tweeted out what the true meaning of a song like Skyfall was. When he raps, I don't want to buy no more, your stuff isn't getting me high no more, he's not necessarily talking about that bad drugs from his plug. It's a metaphor for hip hop music. He's saying he doesn't resonate with the type of music that the previous generation is making. And he's trying to kick down that door and create something that gets people high again, that restores that feeling that you get when you hear something new, fresh, experimental, innovative. And that's exactly what he was delivering on Days Before Rodeo. That project also stands out as one of Travis Scott's best work because it strikes a perfect balance between raw experimentation and cohesive artistry. Compared to any other Travis Scott project, Days Before Rodeo is leaner, it's more focused, each track feels essential, contributing to the overall narrative and vibe, and I'd argue it's his only project without any filler. I'm sorry, but 90210 is definitely a filler track off Rodeo. I'm joking, I'm joking, don't kill me in the comments, but Flying High is definitely a filler off Rodeo. But yeah, again, I do think the upper hand that Days Before has over Rodeo is that not only did it lay the groundwork for Rodeo to be what it is today, however, the highs are higher, there's no track like Drugs You Should Try It on a Rodeo. Travis, in my opinion, delivers better hooks on Days Before Rodeo, on songs like Skyfall or Mamacita. His uses of autotune on records like Drug You Should Try It or Quintana 2 are much better than anything we heard off a of rodeo. I mean, just go look up Travis Scott 2015 Quintana 2 performance live and just hearing him croon that third part of Quintana 2 like I don't know man after watching that I can't argue that there's a better use of autotune on any Travis Scott record I do think Rodeo is a more polished project I think it maybe has more good records than Days Before Rodeo if that makes sense grammatically but I say that because it's a longer project than Days Before Rodeo Days Before Rodeo in my opinion has no filler it's where it all started his autotune usage is better the highs are higher the production is more experimental the features are better. But again, Rodeo is the only project that I could say makes a debate for being a better project than Days Before Rodeo. Now, when we compare Days Before Rodeo to Birds in the Trap, it's not even a question. Days Before is far superior in its raw energy, its innovation. Birds in the Trap leans more into the melodic, atmospheric side of Travis Scott's sound, but it often feels more polished, almost too smooth, too commercially accessible. The lyrics and flows are too watered down. Birds features a lot of what we heard before from Travis, but we heard it better in the past. The experimentation, the diversity, soundscapes and unique uses of autotune that gave Days Before Rodeo its character are now sounded down by the time he makes Birds. This makes Birds a lot more accessible commercially, but it also makes it a much less impactful project. Days Before Rodeo has an unpredictability to it, a sense that Travis Scott is still experimenting, still pushing boundaries. This gives it an energy and liveliness that Birds in the Trap sometimes lacks. I will give Birds credit though of having, in my opinion, one of Travis Scott's best hooks of all time with Goosebumps. I know that song is overplayed, but come on, the first time you heard that record, you can't tell me that hook didn't blow you away, no diddy. But then we get to Astroworld, which is arguably Travis Scott's most ambitious project. See, it's a concept album that aims for a grand cinematic experience, and while it largely succeeds in that, it's also where Travis Scott's strengths become double-edged. Astroworld is meticulously crafted with a high level of detail in the production and sound design, but this polish can sometimes detract from the raw, unfiltered creativity that defined his earlier work like Days Before Rodeo. The mixtape feels more organic, more in the moment, while Astroworld feels like a carefully planned ride and Days Before Rodeo feels like a wild, unexpected journey. That unpredictability is what makes it more thrilling, and aside from that, Travis Scott just sounded more inspired lyrically and vocally, in my opinion, on Days Before Rodeo. The production on Days Before Rodeo is another area where it shines over his other projects. While Travis's later work featured top-tier production, they also carry a level of expectation and refinement. Days Before Rodeo captures Travis at a point where he was still experimenting with his sound. He wasn't afraid to take risks. The beats are gritty, the transitions are seamless, the overall atmosphere is darker and more intense than his later work, the mixtape is a blend of haunting melodies, booming 808s, and intricate, layered beats that push the boundaries of traditional hip-hop. 
Tracks like Mamacita and Quintana 2 have a rawness that you don't quite find in the polished production of an Astro World or a Birds. And in terms of rapping performances, Days Before Rodeo showcases Travis at his most energetic and hungry. His verses are sharp, his flows are varied, and he manages to balance the melodic aspects of his style with hard-hitting bars. In later projects, his rapping often takes a backseat to the production and the overall vibe of the record, but on Days Before Rodeo, his rapping, his lyricism, his bars are front and center. Days Before Rodeo is also Travis taking hip-hop out of the palms of old heads, bringing a completely new sound to the forefront, and simultaneously inspiring the next generation. On Quintana 2, when he raps, Rob my plug, he wasn't getting me high no more, he's not talking about robbing his drug dealer. He's talking about older heads not hitting the same way they used to, and him hijacking that sound by taking over the game with his new sound. Like I mentioned before, he confirmed this when he explained how the song Skyfall is about old dope, which is a metaphor in this case for music, not hitting the same. And Days Before Rodeo was the project that opened the door for this monumental run that Travis was able to have after it. Again, people will hear this for the first time now and realize how amazing of a project it is. And I'm calling it now. I think this will be the first mixtape to do 100K in the first week, 10 years after its first release. I think the biggest reason why we don't consider this project a classic is because it was never on streaming platforms. Therefore, not a large enough audience was able to live with this and sit with it for the past 10 years. As a result, it's overlooked and people don't realize the impact that it had on Travis's later work and basically this entire new generation of artists. It's also his only project with no skips and it features his best showcases of production, auto-tune use, hooks, melodies, and even bars, arguably. Ultimately, Days Before Rodeo is superior because it captures the essence of Travis Scott before he became a superstar. It's an authentic, unfiltered look at an artist who was on the verge of greatness, still willing to take risks, and still finding his voice. That raw, unpolished energy is what makes it his best work. It's a perfect balance of experimentation with accessibility, and it's a snapshot of an artist who was on the brink of stardom, fully in control of his sound and vision and unafraid to take risks. And if you're still not convinced, then let me know in the comments why you think Days Before Rodeo is not Travis Scott's best work. When was the first time you heard this record also? Because if you're just hearing it for the first time on streaming platforms in August of 2024, then you cannot comment. You have no right to comment. Your comment will be deleted off of my page. You'll be blocked forever. And yes, I know Rodeo exists. I know you can make the argument that might be a better album. And I'd like to hear that in the comments. Let me know why Rodeo would be considered a better project than Days Before Rodeo. Based off impact, based off production, based off of replay value, melodies, overall song structure. Give me the whole nine yards. Let me know your favorite Travis Scott album. Let me know what you want to see next. Drop a little like, comment, subscription, and I will catch you guys in the next one.